Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our Builders Live today, this Thursday at 11 o'clock. Guys, if you are not able to watch now, um, and you've maybe just like taken a quick like 30 second hop across from your very important Teams meeting or Zoom, um, don't worry, don't worry, you can still watch this later. Um, because it's on YouTube, uh, you can simply just go back, scroll down, find it where it says the live, and then click on it and you can watch it again. Um, folks, it, I see there are loads of you online, which is absolutely wonderful. And um, I've really missed you guys. It feels like a long time since we had um, the last Builders Live. And uh, remember, I'm here to answer your questions. We've got a topic, so we are going to work around that topic. So think about questions that could line up with that. We're talking focal points, we're talking structure to the garden, pavers, pots, benches, what is underfoot, what is up above us, and how can we use that to enhance our garden space. Um, now guys, stop, don't, don't back away and say, ooh, but this is gonna cost me a fortune. No, 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 no. That's the point, guys. We make something out of nothing. Um, and uh, I've got a very, very cool DIY lined up for you as well, which you're going to get a sneak, sneak, little, 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 little peek at, which is going to get you, I'm telling you right now, whether you have not embraced DIY or whether you're like a, okay, the nails are going to get in the way. It's okay, we've got gloves for that. Um, but you are going to be rushing out to your local builders this afternoon or tomorrow, and you're gonna get yourself set up for the weekend for this project because I know you're gonna love it. Okay, quick tip about the nails. Ladies, gentlemen, you know, I'm just throwing it out there. If you're worried about your nails, I want you to do this. You need to go and buy one of those long, you know the old sunlight soap, you know the cakes. Do you remember those? We always had one at the outside sink. You know, when we, us kids were really too dirty, we'd get given this thing and said, look at you, look at you, you're a mess. Um, and we weren't allowed inside. But anyway, so you know one of those long capes of green soap. You leave that lying out in the sun for a little bit, wait for it to get a bit squishy, and then you take your hands, and I want you attack to attack that bar of soap. Like, yeah, you know where I'm going with this. Like you're having the best argument, and you want to... Scratch someone's eyes out, give them a slap, but except we're not slapping, we are digging our nails and our hands into the soap and pull it back because then underneath your nails, I don't even have the right nails to show you because I, I garden too much. Um, so I've got a little storm piece here. Um, but if you've got slightly longer nails, the green soap gets tucked in underneath them. Okay, yes. Then you go and garden. Ch -ch 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 go and garden, don't dig, go and dig, go and do what you want to do. Um, and when you come back, you simply just run it under the tap with a little scrubbing brush and out comes the dirt first because that's now on the other side of the soap and then the soap after that. And guys, you've got clean nails and you don't need to worry, okay, about those layers that you put on, the mat and the sparkles, I have got no solution for that besides a good pair of gardening gloves. But anyway, 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 here we are, guys. And uh, I really am excited. It's a beautiful day. There's been some rain. The Cape is very cold. Uh, looks like I had a meeting with someone yesterday. And Karumba, he was on Zoom, of course, not with him in Cape Town. But he looked like he was going on an expedition to the North Pole. Um, he had several scarves on. He'd even grown a beard, much to my dismay. Um, but I guess that also helps you stay warm during the winter. Um, let's see who's online, guys, and, and say hello. Um, and there's a aeroplane going overhead, if any of you can hear that. Um, Norm Zima, good morning from Johannesburg. Kathy from Coxstad, good morning. Um, Lorraine from Kailami, hello to you. Um, Vinishri Reddy um, from Durban and the Bluff. Uh, we've got Dylan Gavin from Queensborough. Um, oh, thanks, Dylan. Uh, Dylan likes watching the lives. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so, so much. Um, Marianne from um, Belito. Marianne, you got poor soil, um, so you need to have a look when, because Belito, it's really got bad soils, like sand. You're gardening in the beach, okay? Um, except buckets and little spades don't really work. Um, so I, I want you to keep an eye out for when we are talking soil. In fact, we had a live on soil for builders a few weeks ago. 
So just go back down on the Builder's YouTube channel and you'll see because I'm sure you might get some tips out of that. Um, Sandra Palmer, good morning from Kempton Park. Pam, uh, good morning, Pam. Uh, Lorraine uh, from Pretoria. And now why can't I see the bottom of this? Oh, that's because it's there. Um, uh, Eileen from the USA. Eileen. Okay, I I'm, 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 I'm immediately want to break into song. Uh, come on, Eileen. You know that song? I don't know the rest of the words. You can sing along with me. Okay, anyway. Elaine, good morning from Runfontein. Maureen, uh, good morning, good morning. Um, uh, Adrian Chapman, good morning from Cape Town. Oh, it's a lovely day. Hallelujah. No more rain for you guys. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Who else have I got here? Uh, bah, bah. Lavelle, good morning, good morning. Yes, spring fever is coming, is coming. Uh, Teresa from a hot Boxburg. Um, started off without electricity. I near, 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 near. Um, oh, it happens, guys. It happens. Um, Renee Mercia is here. Ruth. Um, True Body is here, ready and waiting. Jason is here again. Uh, Thea, good morning from Glen Vista. Um, Kathy Raven, ha, guys. Um, and Sybil from Durbanville. Uh, good morning to you all and thank you for, for being with us and spending uh, this next hour with us. Right, guys, let's talk focal points and, and let's, let's talk about the, the thinking behind it. Okay, um, do you know the, the Afrikaans language is, a, is so beautifully descriptive? Um, it, it, it really, really is. Um, you can do this. If you can stand in your garden and in, or in your garden room, let's talk about your garden room because I'm sure that you've got several garden rooms. So you've got uh, maybe the kitchen garden and maybe the lawn area where the kids play. And then maybe there's a bit of a more tranquil area. If you stand in that, and you just have to do one of these, just one of these outlooks, left to right. And your eye does not stop at something. Like if you're going and it, stop, stop, big stop sign. If your eye doesn't stop at something that draws your attention to it, then you definitely should be watching this live. Okay, because that means that the garden is lacking in what we call the focal points. The focal points help us in many ways, and they work tricks on the eye. They can take a narrow area, make it seem bigger. They can take a boring, drab area and all of a sudden create some excitement and drama in it. And to start off with, I, I want to go through, um, I want to share with you a, a slideshow of some beautiful ideas that are really clever and certainly inexpensive. And and this is where I want your imagination to start working and, and the juices to start flowing on, on how you can create this and get this within your garden space. Remember, remember, too much is not good. Um, I remember a, a story that um, the wonderful Keith Kirsten told me. Um, <laughs> he said um, he went to dinner once and... Um, and he walked outside to go and get a breath of fresh air. And he said, there were so many statues in the garden, he thought that more people were coming to dinner. Uh, you, you know, you can have too much. Too many statues is not always a good thing. Too much that your eyes jumping around. And it's like when you open licorice all sorts, or even quality street. You're like, oh, which one should I choose? Which one? Which one? Which one? Because your eyes jumping from bit to bit to bit. So it's a mixture between creating drama but still keeping calm. We've got a visitor again this morning. Um, for those of you that watch my Tanya Fisser lives, you will know that Bahari, uh, this is the tenant's dog, who always comes to visit, say good morning, Bahari. Morning, smile for everybody. Smile, smile, Popol. Smile, good morning. Say morning, where are you? You smile, smile. <laughs> Did you see that smile? Smile, Bahari. Say hello to everybody. Hello, hello, smile. Now that Bahari's licked my glasses, I can only see out the left lens. Right, okay. Right, Bahari. Okay, I know you want to learn about focus points and um, focal points, but uh, yeah, we need, we've got work to do. Um, I'm just going to clean my glasses before we start this. 
Uh, at Bahari is, um, yeah, part of the furniture, huh? Uh, Rolo's BFF. Absolutely. Right, okay. Oh, look at that. I can see you. Okay, guys, let's get down to this. Um, I'm just going to switch across very, very quickly. And we are going to show you what we're talking about when it comes to focal points. Okay, I'm just waiting for us to connect up there. Warwick, there we go. Right, guys. First of all, one of the easiest ways that you can do, that you can create a bit of drama and take a small area and make it seem bigger. Listen to what I just said, a small area and make it seem bigger. Um, guys, this area where this bench is here is, is really small. Um, you can see there are only two pavers next to each other that have been put long ways. Okay, so those pavers are the 600s. So you've got 600 plus 600, uh, 1.2, 1.2 meters, that's all it is. And yet you are still able to get a bench in there. So I love the fact that with that combination of some simple pavers, and those are actually the concrete railway sleepers, they work beautifully. Um, with a bit of gravel in between, pop a bench on there, um, and that works, guys. That absolutely works. So we went from the bright blue, which added a little bit of drama and lifted the area to something quite sublime and beautiful. Now, if you are privileged enough, and if you are lucky enough to have a garden with a beautiful mountain in the background like that, notice how the trees on either side of the bench, do you see those trees? Yeah, you can't see the tops of them. But notice how those trees are framing the mountain. They're framing the view. Okay, so how, if we live in a townhouse garden, how could we get that right? You could still plant two trees. And against your palisade fence, you could either paint it a color. You could put up some trellising and a bench in front of that to frame the view. That's what we want to see because that draws your eye in. It stops your eye from wandering up and down. Okay, and it draws you right into that point. And of course, there's nothing quite as beautiful as a classic, beautiful white bench, which mixes with the colors in this garden. Okay, the colors in this garden are very muted. They're pinks and they're greens and whites. Okay, nice and simple, nice and simple. The smallest area can create any kind of look that we're wanting. However, folks, however, close your eyes quickly. Close your eyes and then open them up again and look at that picture. Uh, bit too much going on there, wouldn't you say? Mm, mm. I'm with you on that. I'm with you on that. Because beyond that, there's some other benches that are hanging about and doing something. And I'm not too sure what's exactly going on there. But ideally, you would have wanted to have secluded this garden room which is where the peep, where you can relax. Uh, that's your patio chairs, where you can sit and have your cup of coffee. Ideally, I would want it to have screened that off from the, the next garden room on the other side. Either screened it off with a hedge or some trellis. Um, and maybe, maybe, just for a little bit of drama, what I would have done is I would have created a little peep hole. Just a little peep hole. So you've got the hedge, a little peephole where you can, I want to, because everybody wants to see what's on the other side. Everybody does. So what's on the other side? Take a look. What's on the other side? Um, and that creates the drama in itself. You know, like I always say, at the end of the pathway, guys, at the end of the pathway, what is going to make me enter into a pathway and look all the way down? And what is going to make me walk that distance? So, we all need a Charlize Theron at the end of that pathway, or a Richard Gere, or a Brad Pitt. We need something. What's going to make me walk down there? Okay, and that's important. So, whatever it is for you, if it's Charlize or Brad, if it's a statue, if it's a plant, if it's a, a piece of trellis, or just a beautiful object, what is going to draw you down and that thing that you're putting there is called your focal point. Okay. Right. Simplicity, guys. Simplicity 
a little table and chair. These little guys are really inexpensive. I, I mean, especially if you get them on special. Um, very inexpensive and they do the job. Uh, just also think practicality. So, and especially with seating. Um, I just want to touch on this, especially to do with seating. Folks, if you are going to buy a metal bench, okay, do not put the metal bench in the full sun. Do not. I, I mean, I've seen it. Because you put the bench in the spot where it's going to look best. Yeah, do. But whoever is going to go and sit down on that bench is going to get a, a rude awakening. <laughs> so, so try and combine practicality um, with where it's going to look best. And unless there were cushions on these chairs, as there are cushions on this little bistro set, um, it could be quite... Um, Yes, it could be quite an interesting seating experience. Right, but never mind. Look how cleverly this is done. Um, a few bright colors, and we know how brightness works and how colors can enhance mood, atmosphere, um, and just the general feeling that you've got in the area. And this works particularly well. You know, guys, nowadays there are so many products on the market that you can use uh, to, to take something that's old and rickety that might even have a bit of rust on it. Um, they're direct to metal products that you can paint on them. They even come in a spray paint tin. So you don't even need to be stressed out about all the prep that you're gonna do. But add a splash of color, because color works. Okay, right, we're gonna talk water features. Now please don't all get scared and run away or tune into some other YouTube channel. Um, please don't get stressed out. Water features have advanced so, so much. No longer are they these pits of mosquito holding um, millions and billions of lava. No, um, they, they really have, the pumps that have come through many design phases, are, they run on such little ele electricity. In fact, it's cheaper to keep them running all the time than to switch them on and off, switch them on and, on and off. And also the parts are readily available. So when we talk about the parts, we talk about that impeller. The impeller is the part that goes round and round and round and round, okay, that actually makes the water move. Those parts are interchangeable, and a lot of the pumps also come with very good guarantees. So, so don't stress yourself out too much about that. And also, you do not need a tap where water is running into the volume of uh, wherever your pond is. The water that's in there will simply just circulate and keep going, okay. So... How can we do this? Very, very simply, guys. Let's take a look at this water feature on the slide over here. This is made out of some piping. Some piping which you can pick up at your local builders, whether it be copper piping, um, whether it be some galvanized piping that you simply just knit together, screw together, or even solder together. But you really can create your own. Something more classical, where you're wanting to create a beautiful focal point by simply doing two things, really. Two things, number one, is to either hide out the neighbors, okay? Get rid of an unsightly wall and to create a diversion. Now, diversions are important. Where you have falling water, like we've got out of the, these lovely spouts, and, and those spouts are simply uh, welded pieces of sheet metal, um, that are then put into the wall uh, with the, the pipe coming through that feeds from the back of that wall. So, you know, you, didn't, the, the, you don't have to do major engineering here on this. The pipe would simply come up the back, there would be a hole through the wall, um, which would be that plastic tubing that you buy from builders. Now, guys, water does a whole lot of things. Number one, it brings that <sighs> zen it brings that zen moment. Um, it calms you. You know, you, I can be in the foulest of highly strung moods and I just need to go and sit by my water feature and just, tick, 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 just listen, just listen for a bit. And it just brings your inner vibration down and just calms you down. It really, really does. Um, it's movement. It's tranquil. It's gorgeous. But I want to share a trick with you. If you've got noise, like traffic noise, okay? Traffic noise, wherever you live. If you've got neighbors that tend to run the music a bit too high, 
um, and you want to drown that out. One of the best ways to drown it out is by having a water feature with falling water. You want that height from where the spout is to where the pond is. You want that to be high so that you have that splash. You have that constant, constant flow because that is such a trick to drown out noise. Um, one of the best tricks in the world uh, and, and it works. Um, whether or not it's going to be a large wall or a large structure, there are water features like this which you can simply buy as a kit form. So it's got the base and it's got the back that sit on them with the spout. Remember, these are transportable as well. So whether you are staying in or you're renting the place, you can do it. You know, it doesn't mean that once you put it in that it's there forever for the next people. No, 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 no. And guys, in terms of focal points, something as simple as a beautiful bird bath. That, that's it, just, just a lovely bird bath. Um, popped into a garden bed, preferably with a tree somewhere close, um, because then what happens is the following. I want you to look at the shrubbery here in this garden bed. Look how low the shrubbery is in the front. Okay, very, very low. And then it goes taller, taller, taller to the trees at the back. But what the bird bath does is the bird bath is that intermediate. So you've got the heart of the trees at the back, okay? And then you're coming down to the slightly larger shrubbery, intermediate, then slightly lower, which is the bird bath, and then the low shrubbery right in the front. It helps to guide your eye. Please, 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 very important. This is a very important thing. When you are going to buy your pots or your water feature or your your bird bath for your house to create your focal point, please, as a bliff, take along a tape measure. Okay. For several reasons. Number one, before you leave the house, I want you to look at the spot. Look at it, okay? Okay, here's my trellis. Here's my trellis. Darling, I want to put a water feature in front of this, or I want a bird bath. Right. Yeah, I'm at so work for Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get the tape measure. Do not... Do not be a victim of this. And what is that called? Buyer's remorse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or you buy the pot and you put it in front of your double story house and it's like a pimple. It's like, Vasier, where'd you go? Where'd you go? I just, spent, I just spent 500 rand on this thing and you can't even see it. Okay, so please take your tape measure along. Measure it. Yeah, a meter. Yes, that's going to work. Anything below 600, that's not going to work. Take a piece of string if you don't have a tape measure. Take out your shoelace. Do something so that you have got an idea of the scale and proportion. Now, if you listen to those very, very fancy design programs where they talk about your interior and the hues and I don't know what else they talk about and the texture, that you're going to hear this word thrown around, scale and proportion. Okay, it's one of the design elements, key design elements. But guys, it comes down to look, see, think. Okay, practical, practical, right? So a bird bath this big is not going to work in front of a 1.8 meter trellis. No, it's going to look poop. Okay, so take along the tape measure, measure it, and only then pay for it and load it into your car. Because I'm telling you, there's going to be a huge domestic dispute. When you get home, you've unloaded this thing. It scratched the car. Builders do deliver. Um, but if you put it in the car, you've got it out. It scratched the car seat. Something happened. It chipped on the way out high and near. Then you put it up and it's the wrong size. You're so over it. You need more medication and you just don't have the energy. So <laughs> just, just circum circumvent all those dramas. Because I know that you've been there, guys. Um, you know, I've been there too. Um, we've all made those mistakes. Um, so please, please don't, don't be a victim. Don't be a victim. Okay. Right. <gasps> One of the simplest, simplest little things that you can do. Um, this could have been just a drab wall. A drab face brick wall. And for those of you that have got face brick or clinker, you'll know it's quite challenging to work with in terms of your colors and your textures. It is quite challenging. 
because very soon it can just look like a licorice all sorts hodgepodge that's going on there. Um, from a design element, work with neutral colours, plain, so either whites or greens. Okay, try not to throw too many colours in there because all the colours and textures from in those bricks start jumping out at you, like become more pronounced. But in this picture over here, it, it's one of my favourite, it's iconic. Yes, it's a, um, a face brick wall, but in front of it, there's just some lovely ground cover. That's a little plectranthus ground cover, uh, which can grow in the sun or the shade. Um, really easy to care for, indigenous. But under the tap, guys, just put a little grinding stone. A little grinding stone so you're not wasting water. The birds will come along and enjoy it. The little geckos and the little skinks and lizards will also come and enjoy a little sip. And just to make it feel not so out of place, okay, important, not so out of place, like somebody upstairs was very angry and they threw down some rocks into your garden to make a rockery. You've seen those, I know. I know, especially when you're driving by big shopping centres. I can't give the GPS coordinates because that would be just rude. Um, but you've all seen them where it looks like Somebody was very cross, they threw a whole lot of rocks down, they landed and then they put one or two aloes in and now you've got a rockery. Ne ah, pff, no. Ah, it makes me get ill, okay? So to make things not look out of place and just the same with this lovely grinding stone, what has been added? Just a couple of river boulders. So simple. Just so simple, but what does it do? It gives it a place and a time, and it gives it a meaning. Um, and, and I think that is such a clever design trick. And I've got another beautiful image to show you a little bit later, which is ooh, magnificent. A simple pot that you've taken. It could be as cheap as chips. We can pick these pots up, really, for just a couple of hundred rand. And all that you've done is taken some silicone, pop the silicone in the drainage holes, make sure you've left it for 48 hours, and pop some water inside it, and you've created your own little water feature. Plain water, still water, is beautiful. We call them reflection ponds. The tar use them beautifully as focal points because their gardens are small and the Japanese small small pokey little things but they still have water they have a terracotta pot they've plugged up the holes and they put a water lily in there or they just put a beautiful papyrus and they still have some fissies inside there but they've added that element the feng shui element the element of nature earth wind fire water they've added it into their little space to give us that sense of wholeness, which what which is what it does so beautifully. Okay, right. We're going on to walls, 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 because we all are surrounded by them. My goodness, my goodness, wherever we live, there's either a wall between us and the neighbor, um, whether we're in our offices, uh, wherever we are, they, they, they're part of our lives and they can be very hot, they can be very hard on the eye, in terms of reflection um, and and they can be unsightly okay so let's find ways of turning them actually into beautiful focal points that is not only a blank wall to stare at because we know phew, that that can be very very it's almost demoralizing and I, and I will say that because there's no interest there's no intrigue there and there's nothing I mean who's going to walk up to a blank wall and look at it I mean, I know there was a Shirley Valentine's line that said hello wall um, but, but nobody's going to go up there, so change it into something. Um, and the picture here, uh, which is one of these uh, four rack, um, uh, what is it? It's a, it's a, what do you call those things? Uh, four tier shelf, that's what it is. You can either get these in wood, you can get them in, um, in metal. You could have it as just your objets. It could be your collection. It could be simply your watering cans. It could be your herbs. Um, it could be your color for the season. And so that, for me, is a really, really clever way um, just to create some kind of focal point. 
Now we've seen many, many styles and many changes in how to use our walled pots and how to attach them. It's got much easier now because you even get hanging baskets that are half moon um, that work very easily. All it needs is a nail and anchor, or even if you're brave enough just to use a steel nail whacked into the wall, and then you can hang up your half moon hanging basket. Um, and they just clip on there and work really nicely. But here, playing with height, uh, playing with the plants that you're putting in there, really does give you a beautiful look, um, which can change with the seasons. And of course, you could have them all one color, um, or you could go as they have here. They've attempted to go just with white, but I think some of the impatience didn't make it through. Ah, oh, guys, and pots and pots and pots. Um, uh, probably one of the best ways and the simplest ways that you can include focal points into your garden. And remember, all the pots needn't be planted up. Uh, go with something timeless when you are choosing them. And when I say timeless, I, I'm talking about terracottas. I'm talking about concrete that can then be painted. Okay. Um, metal has its place, but it comes in and out of fashion. And certainly if you're on the coast and you haven't got stainless steel, it's going to rust. Okay. It is going to rust. So choose something that is timeless. And what I mean by that. It doesn't mean that your investment has to be high. Absolutely not. It really doesn't. What it does mean is that all I need you to do is choose wisely. Okay, so here we've got a pot with changes of the season um, that really do celebrate it. Much like these guys that I've got here on my left. Um, take a look at these over here. Folks, um, we love doing this at home because what it does is it, it really just rings out that we are going into a different season um, and we can celebrate them. Timeless terracotta pots, uh, which have become inexpensive, actually. You know, uh, you've always got to keep a lookout because you can pick them up. We've got lovely little violas in here mixed with this. Look at this. Oh, I don't know if you guys have seen these. This is a lovely variegated geranium. I think she's called Mrs. Pollock. Yes, Malfa. A beautiful mulfa. This is Mrs. Pollock. So even when it doesn't have a flower, I mean, here these flowers are pushing through, but when it doesn't have a flower, guys, this foliage is spectacular. Okay, remember the violas, the geraniums, both enjoy full sun or at least four hours of sunlight a day. Remember, all you've got to do here is keep on deadheading your little violas. Okay, remember, take the deadheads off because then they give you more flowers. And in here, what I would do is this would continue right through the spring into the summer. I have had some mulfas. I kid you not. It's not actually one here. I've had some mulfas that are going on now by the chickens, just outside by their hock. I think now for their third year or fourth year. And remember, we live in the mist belt. We're on the mist belt where it rains all summer. You can't even see each other. There's so much mist around the garden. And... Mulfas traditionally love hot, dry conditions. Eastern Cape, Garden Route, Western Cape, they love that hot, hot, dry. But even here at home in the Mist Belt, they have been just fine. Mulfas, perfect to use. Remember, in containers, you need to feed things, guys. Um, so if you're using containers as focal points, as a grouping, um, always remember to feed them to keep them in top condition. Okay. In the back here, we've got a lovely daisy, just an ordinary common daisy. I mean, common, 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 common is mud. Um, but a daisy in a pot is iconic for me. It, it, it truly is iconic. And it just, as simple as it is, it always just brings beauty and calmness to an area. Um, here's our little geranium. Now, the difference between this geranium and this malfa, guys, look at this one. This one's more upright. And I'm actually going to do this very quickly. Um, I want to just show you the difference. Um, and it's, I, I want you to show you here. Have a look here quickly, guys. This here is a quick lesson on these mulfas. Do you see how serrated these leaves are? Okay. This is known as the ivy leaf geranium. Ivy being trailing. Okay. So this is the trailing geranium. This one with the more rounded lobes is always the bush geranium. 
Okay, so let's go back to here. You can see this, deeper lobes, trailing. Rounded, bush upright. Okay, nice and easy. That'll be a good way. Okay, beautiful abelia. And oh my gosh, don't ever, 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 ever get you or your husband or whoever to clean the terracotta pots. People pay good money for this look. They really do pay. This beautiful aged, oh, yo, man. It, it, it's spectacular, guys. It, it really is spectacular. So please don't wash them. Please don't wash them, whatever you do. Okay, let's go on to something else. Take a look at this. When creating focal points, we know odd numbers work best. Okay? So whether it's three pots along a wall, okay, or five pots. But if you're going through a pathway, you want one and two to balance. So if you're looking for balance, you want to go for even numbers. If you're wanting to create a final look, once off odd numbers. Okay, evens and odds, very important to think about, very, very important. But keep them the same, colors, textures, finishes, very, very important. Remember I said to you that pots as a focal point, needn't be planted up. It can simply just be a beautiful urn on a plinth. However, if we had taken this urn and simply put it in this garden bed, what were those words I was using a little bit earlier? Scale and proportion? It would have got lost. It would look like somebody didn't finish their job. But lifting it immediately draws your eye to that area of the garden. Nice and simple, guys. Really. And sometimes less is more. In fact, it probably is the rule all the time. Less is more. Um, and when we talk about, and oh, I'm going to get onto that. I'm going to get onto that. Just, okay. The next way, drawing people into areas to create focal points. Isn't this spectacular? Now, what I like about this is that the garden has been divided by clear axes. One straight down the middle, but one slightly off. So it's not a typical cross. It's not like a crossroads, like a four-way stop street. Um, and the, the garden, small space. This is this garden here, if I remember correctly, is about six meters by four meters. Not very big. Not very big at all. But what it has done is made the space look bigger. Ah, it's made it look bigger. Yes by creating the four quadrants. So a small space can look bigger by dividing it up. I, I, hope that may, I hope that is resonating with you. So here are the four quadrants. What's also important about how this has made to not look like licorice all sort garden is because the main element that's been used in here is the gravel, which is one color. It's fine, which is gentle on the eye. Um, and the white roses, the iceberg roses, is the golden thread. The golden thread that is used in each quadrant. It, it, it's not exactly the same. Each quadrant is not exactly the same. So we're not talking about a formal garden here, guys. Don't, don't, don't get mixed up with that. This is just about that one word that we hear often, repetition. Repetition. Okay, so it's like in your lounge, you're not going to have 17 different color scatter cushions. No, that's going to hurt your eyes. Okay, that's going to be like licorice all sorts. Okay, you might have one color that is going to be your dominating color that's going to be your golden thread. And the golden thread in this garden that links these four quadrants together is the white icebergs. Okay, beautiful, so simple. Um, yeah, simplicity just does it. Same thing here. What is going to draw me down the path? Besides those two feet that are at the end of this um, picture, um, there has to be something else. There has to be something else. But a very quick trick when you're looking at making focal points is this, folks. Never make the pathway straight unless, of course, you are using a formal garden design. 
Okay, very important. Unless you're using formal garden, then like we saw in the previous slide, the quadrants. But if, I, if you want me to go from here, if you want me to go from here to there, and if I don't have to go in a straight line, please don't make me. Please don't make me. Make me go via Bloemfontein, via Cape Town, to get to Fixburg. Okay, make me walk around. Don't give them the shortest point, A to B. No, gardening is a bit of an adventure. It must be an adventure. You must not know where you're going. And pathways are the best tricks. They, I love them because, you know, you make them narrow and people's mood changes. They're like, oh, 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 where am I going? All of a sudden, there's like a bit of heightened uh, senses going on, especially when there's large shrubbery around you. When it's open and low, you stride through it. So you can also use them to slow people down and yourself in the garden. Um, but folks, Talking of pathways, um, we've seen pavers used here. In the next slide, I'm also going to show you some very large pavers that were thrown in situ. Um, and I'm going to come back to this garden. But before I come back to this garden, I want to talk to you about this over here. Now, um, we all know that that money's a little bit tight. Né? Okay, we gotta, we got to watch where we spend those red colored notes and the blue colored notes. Um, and of course, if you've got your builder's card, then you can definitely get discounts along the way and other special offers. But we challenged our, our team, um, Exo and Kevin, and we said to them, guys, I want you to make me something that's not going to be expensive. I want you to make me something for my garden, for a focal point, for some practical use in the garden um, that we can use. And you know, those boys seriously impressed me. Um, uh, to a certain point, but I'll cover that a little bit later. Um, but guys, look what they made. Look what they made. They made us the most beautiful pavers. Um, this is, it, it, they really did a great job. They even got the colouring right. They even got the little edging. Um, and all it was, was by simply creating um, a mould for you to be able to do them. But um, I'm going to give you a very, very quick sneak peek on, um, on what EXO did. So take a look here. Thanks, T. Now this is a very simple DIY. All I had to do was to knock together a mold using Shatterply, make cement, pour it in, waited for it to cure, and there I had my paving blocks. So if you're looking to upgrade your outdoor living area and to make it more functional, this could be a step into the right direction. Now, if you want to see how I made this, click the link in the description below. Over to you. Okay, so I said that I was very impressed to a certain point. The point where I got lost and impressed and not impressed was when they put those pavers down. You see why those boys need me, you know? They put the pavers down. They didn't even put any gravel in between them. I near Cicela. Wena, wena. Anyway, so after they've watched this program now, this live, they're going to go and put some plants in there. They're going to put a bit of gravel in there. Thank goodness they leave the gardening up to me. But guys, so easy, um, really easy. We have created many, many pavers. Uh, we've built many different types of pavers for the garden. Um, and it doesn't cost a lot. It really doesn't. So um, please take a look. It's on the YouTube channel right now. Um, but don't go look right now. No, 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 no. Stop, 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 stop. Yeah. Don't go look right now. After the live. Go down, um, have a look at Exo making his pavers, and I, I know you're going to love it. And of course, from a colour perspective, go wild. Okay, go wild. All right, back to this over here, guys. This slide is spectacular. Um, oh. And you know what makes it work? Where's the focal point? Mm, you're battling, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, I, I know you are, because it's meant to be like that. The focal point, the first focal point is the metal structure. That's just on that second landing. That draws your eye, but then as you've caught that, what is framing it to make it look like it should be there and not just lost in a, in a garden? The arches, that pergola structure that's coming off it. The lines also are working because the lines of the pavers 
are straight and directly in line with the pergola. So using your main axis of the garden. But the plants in this border are spectacular. And why doesn't it look so hard? And why does it look like there's just concrete in the garden? It's because the plants are billowing over the edge. They, they're tumbling across into the flower bed or into the, into the, the walkway. They're tumbling onto the pavers. Yeah, it does make your maintenance a little bit more tricky, um, but the desired effect uh, is, is really beautiful. Um, crazy paving always has a space, and if you're going to be making these pavers this weekend, guys, take a small area that might normally just be dust. I mean, this is down the side of a home. This is like the back exit of the home. It isn't the entrance. You know on the side of your houses, Come on, come on, we've all got this. On the side of your homes, between you and the neighbor, there's this little, little pie key, this little passage, and sometimes the leftover bricks are left there, and sometimes the, the, the leftover um, slate from the roof, or, or it's, you know that place, it's there. No, 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 no don't, make, don't, don't leave it looking haha like that. Um, rather take those little bricks that are left, use them as a paver, um, hide things but turn it into something beautiful okay and there are plants that will grow in there the in-between ground cover that's been used here is called mazis and um, in the next slide the in-between ground cover that's been used here is called sutura sutura um, or it's also known as bacopa which is an indigenous little ground cover of course mondo grass could do the job but oh well, you know oh mondo mondo it makes me tired just makes me tired okay probably one of the most iconic gardens that I have ever ever seen is this garden man I, what is not to love I, I just it, it makes me weak at the knees when when I see this garden remember I told you a bit earlier I was going to show you how boulders were used just ordinary boulders but of the same hue and color to just bring design element in. Man, I, I, I cannot tell you how this garden just talks to me. Let's just break it down very simply. To give structure to the garden, um, the hedges were used. The focal point is clearly the bench at the end, which has been framed on either side by the pots. Yes, framed on either side by the pots. The hedge at the back gives us the backdrop for the bench to sit in very snugly. To carry on and to give a bit of interest, the two toperies, which is a salt bush, um, those are salt bushes that have been pruned, spectacular. Um, that could also be a Eugenia, um, it could be some Buxus, you could even take a Duranta and you could prune it to create that. The ground cover in between the boulders is plain and simple, so your eyes not jumping, jumping, jumping all over. It's calm. This garden is busy, yet it's still calm because of the, the use of so few textures. So there's the boulders. In between the boulders, plain green. Hedges, neatly clipped. Rounded, no jagged edges. Um, this garden will stand out for me uh, for, for years and years to come as probably one of the cleverest design elements I have ever, ever seen. Um, really beautiful. Very, very beautiful. Right, here's a perfect example of don't make the pathway straight. Who wants to go around that corner? Come on, I want to see what's around the corner. I, I'm dying to walk around the corner. I, I want to see. You know, I almost want to rush along to go and see what's around the corner. So, um, it really is a clever design element to get you to focal points. Folks, and remember, if you've got gravel, keep the gravel in by using edging. Please, you must use edging or else the gravel escapes and jumps into the flower beds and that happens overnight while you're sleeping. Um, but it's important to use some kind of edging. And edging could be as simple here as we've seen with the little cobblestones. Of course, it could also be, look at the next one, it could also just be um, some larger... Uh, pavers that are used. Those are pavers that you normally use in that, that geometric block style where if you go into big parking lots and that you'll see this paver being used. Um, but pretty inexpensive. You can buy them by the square meter. But once again, what is dividing the gravel to the lawn in the textures? Okay. Um, 
Edging also can be as simple as taking some CCA treated poles and lying them on their side to keep the garden bed contained. Um, change in textures, and this is this is a lovely garden. This is the garden that we visit, um, well, we hope to visit every year. Um, it's in Bedford in the Eastern Cape. It gets very, very cold there. It gets exceptionally hot, exceptionally hot and dry, like 40, 45 degrees in the summer months. Um, and I mean really down to minus cold, freezing frosts in the winter. And this garden just comes alive. It's called the Long Garden because it is a long garden. <laughs> uh, but very cleverly designed uh, in that large sweeps of pathways that make you want to walk to the end. Because at the end of this pathway, when I go around the corner, there is a beautiful bench. And I sit on it whenever I do go there. And then I look back and the view has changed because I'm seeing it from the other side. Um, but, but really, spectacular. Oh, and one of the most iconic ways, and cleverest ways, and cheapest ways, which used to be all a rage, in fact, we all had them around our swimming pool, was slasto. Oh, remember how the, remember everybody had a slasto around their swimming pool, and then we all hated it. Um, but some of you might still have slasto lying around in a pile after you dug up the kidney-shaped swimming pool and then put down something very fancy, like a tramatina tile or something. And if you have got the slasto, use it as crazy paving. Um, because it it changes texture and when you change texture in a pathway what it does is it slows you down because you've got to slow down you know you've 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 actually got to slow down because you can't walk fast over that because you might trip so if you want to slow people down in an area change the texture change the medium that they're walking on okay nice nice little tip that you can use um and ground covers, we've spoken about those. This on the on the right of your screen is a little sedum. It's a little fet blanky. It grows like a weed, and in winter it turns into this beautiful golden. Um, there, there are many different types of them, but a very good ground cover. On our left here, it's very interesting. It's actually just an oregonum. So when we spoke about slowing people down in areas, where you might have a pathway. Um, a really nice way of doing it is by adding something fragrant. So when your shoe touches that oregonum, or even if it could be just penny royal, it could be a mint, when you hit it, you know, because you're walking, because I'm getting to the end there, I'm, I'm getting to the end of that pathway. But when they, when they brush against it, up comes the fragrance, up comes the fragrance, and you stopped because it hits you. Ways of slowing people down, changing the texture, adding in fragrant plants. Okay, okay. Um, right, also a nice way of doing and adding in some interest here. These are just large sleepers, but a very narrow bed on the left, and once again showing that curve. Uh, change in textures, nice and simple, and certainly a budget option that we can go for. And where driveways are concerned, aye, but driveways can look so ugly and boring. Because the first thing we do is the architect tells us, or whoever's building the house, no, we need to gravel the whole thing. Or we need to put concrete. Okay? Or even better, let's tar the whole thing. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. No, no. It creates heat. It makes it very boring and unsightly. Um, so, please, please, guys. If you are considering things like that, rather just, just take a step back and put less of the hard surfaces and more surfaces that will drain away. Why? Because then you're not going to have problems with water, okay, that when the, when, when the summer rains do come, or those that have had the winter rains, where water is channeled over a solid surface, it creates energy and washes the front garden away. I've seen it happen because there is never enough drainage in terms of, of pipes that will take away excess water. It is never calculated correctly. Okay, so have areas where the, rather where water can drain away. And finally, something quite simple, guys. Just some log edging. It could be from a tree that you cut down, 
get some blogs cut into little bits. Um, you could use anything. Um, you could even make these from the design that, we, you know, that we've shown you that EXO made with making pavers. There are many ways of beating the budget and making that red note stretch. Uh, so it's not all about having the latest and the greatest. It could just simply be the old wheelbarrow that's put at the end of the path and planted up. It could be a whole lot of tires stacked on top of each other with a lovely plant in it. Um, it could be anything. Be creative and, and push the envelope. And remember, remember, always have something to lead you down the garden path. Keep the focal points simple. Keep them true to who you are and keep them in keeping with the style and feel of your garden. Yes, you are going to get it wrong. We are going to make some mistakes. But you know what? You can always then re-gift that as a Christmas present. Tie a ribbon around that piece of trellis that you bought that you didn't like, or give it another coat of paint. Folks, it's been wonderful spending the last hour with you. I do hope that you've got some ideas on what you can do and what you can implement, and I hope that you're itching to get out there and go and... Change your garden up, because it's spring, of course. Um, and yeah, I'm always itching to go and change things. Uh, folks, please do remember to go and visit the blog on the Builders website, where there are loads of articles, videos, great ideas that you can implement in your garden. Um, any questions from today, we will answer a little bit later after this live is finished. And uh, remember to always keep a lookout on the Builders YouTube channel. Please do subscribe. Press that red button. Subscribe so that when great videos come up on teaching you how to become a better DIYer, you know, we all need that, um, how to make things and how to solve gardening problems, you will be reminded of them. Folks, until the next time we meet again, please take care of you and yours. Um, look after yourselves. Remember to sanitize. Um, take care of you and yours. And most importantly, as always, God bless you and happy gardening. Thank you.